and welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd i'm your host mikey and in today's tutorial we're going to be making really quick scrunchies this could also be a flower or a pin on brooch or whatever you decide that you want to do with this now there are many different colors of this whole line and it is actually made of fleece and it's called red heart boutique fleecy it's got a really nice thick property to it so that it's designed like sachet but it's designed to keep you warm really marketed for kids it's in a darker color line so that kids can actually wear this uh, and not actually have to worry about getting it dirty too much it's a really great idea now when I was at a live show I seen somebody make one of these into a flower it's actually a different product but they made it into a flower and they had it sitting on the top of a ponytail of your hair and I thought wow that's actually really cool it's kind of reminded me of a flamingo dancer if you really want to put it bluntly but I thought this is a really cool idea a great quick project you can get four scrunchies out of one ball of yarn the ball of yarn is about $5.29 so it's less than two dollars a scrunchie if you really break it down to the cost so today I'm going to show you how to do a quick little scrunchie and I'm going to show you a little bit more about this yarn in just a moment so here is the nice big ball of boutique fleecy we're just going to slide off the ball band just like so and we're going to go from the outside and you'll see that the yarn is very similar to sachet but we're going to be using crochet um, for this today you could actually knit with this as well and just like sachet you have outside loops where everything is working into and then the sash or the fleecy is then staying on the outside just like so and you don't have to worry about any fraying or anything like that so let's uh, begin I'm going to grab a crochet hook today where it's going to be a size G of four and a half millimeter crochet hook and we're just needing one ball to make four scrunchies I'm only going to show you how to do one scrunchie on camera today and I'm going to give you some information right now to help you to get the right size right away. First of all once you cut this yarn you're going to want to use it for scrunchies there's not going to be enough left to make an additional scarf if you're using one ball of yarn. So to make a scrunchie you need about 100 inches and that's 2.8 yards and when you look at it these balls of yarn have about 13 yards on them so that uh, allows you to have four of these. I ended up with about maybe a foot to a foot and a half or maybe even two feet of extra at the end. You know what don't waste good yarn just incorporate it and make it even more fluffy. So what I did for myself is that I went from the middle of my chest and I just extended my right arm and that was about 33 inches and then I just times that by three so it gave me 99 but for tutorial reasons I'm going to tell you it's about 100 inches and I'm going to do that off camera right now. Okay here is what I have here is my 100 inches just like so I just measured it out using my arm didn't really get a ruler just you know <laughs> I've already figured it out. So I'm just going to cut it with scissors and you can see it's very much like fleece it's not going to fall apart on you so it's great and what I just did for myself is that I just went and made four of these strips at one time then I didn't have to come back and do it if you're doing multiples if like this. So if you have a, a little girl or even yourself that would like to wear one of these you know it's a great uh, gifting idea too it's pretty simple and it's easy to make. So before you begin to do this part what I want you to do is I want you to prepare a darning needle first on one side and then just get some yarn that complements the color. So it's about maybe about two feet long. You don't really need it that long but I've just done it for myself. And one side I'm going to create a slip knot and I'm going to leave it open like this. Like this. So okay so we have a slip knot and then this side what I want to do is that I want to slide the darning needle onto it. Okay, so what happens at the end is that you're going to be all thumbs. So if you can prepare this in ahead of time, you're laughing and it will save you a lot of time as well. So on off the side, I'm going to have the darning needle and it ready as I go. So let's grab a size um, four and a half or size four and a half millimeter or size G crochet hook, and let's just extend this out. It doesn't matter what side that I chose it from. So I'm just going to choose any uh, open side, just like so. So it's very much like sachet and what I want you to do is that I want you to pull open the loops, go in from the front. So here's the trick. Okay, so I want you to then slide around and put the hook into the next one here from the back. So I'm going to go one, two, and I see how I'm just grabbing them, three, four, five. So I have five that came in from the back and here's the six so I'm going to take the six. Now just pull everything down okay all these loops are on here pull everything down. We need to get the last loop through everything so turn the grab that first one and turn it upside down and pull through everything. 
that's a lot easier than it looks. You'll have to get practice of that. So this is the same loop that we've just done. So we just do it again. So we come from the back. So one, two, three, four, and five like this. Okay. So now we have our five and now we're gonna come from the front. And again, once you get that first one that we have already done, it's easier to do the rest. So we're just gonna turn over and pull that one through like this. Okay. So let's carry on. So we're gonna, these don't take any time. So one and two and three, four and five. And then this is a six. So we come in from the front, turn it over and pull through everything. Now this is not like sachet where you know how sachet can get all twisted up. This is really easy to maintain. So that was one, two, three, four and five like so. And so that means that the six is gonna come from the front. So we and put it onto the hook, turn the hook over and pull through everything. Now sometimes you end up pulling out a few extra strings through. It's no big deal. It really isn't. It just makes it easier if you only grab one through. But if you happen to snag on a few extra, it doesn't make a difference really. So let's do it again. So one from the back, two, and three, four, five, and six, or sorry, <laughs> five. So then the six is from the front and pull through. Okay, we're almost done already. So one, two, three, and four, and five. And then coming from the front, we we'll grab six and pull through. Okay, I, I don't have very much left. That's how fast it goes. So one, two, three, four, five. And then the six is from the front. Okay, so if you don't have enough stitches left, fake it. You know, it's a good thing. So let's come from the back again. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so six is coming from the front like that. Okay, see how I snagged on a few extra? I'm not worried about it. So now I only have a few more left. So I wanna continue just to grab the remaining ones from the back until I get to the very last one, which is the next one. And that's the one I wanna go from the front. Okay, and we pull through everything. So, and you can see I have extra um, strands on there. No big deal. So I'm gonna take out my hook. See how I'm not even taking a camera break? This is how fun it is. So what we're gonna just do is grab that darning needle and we're going to insert it through the loop. And this is going to lock that into position. Okay, so I wanna pull through and I wanna pull through too. I get to that slip knot and then slip the darning needle through the slip knot. And now I've just locked it into position. So just pull everything nice and tight like that. So what I want to do is that before I, I get any further, I just wanna insert the needle in behind a couple more strands in that same area just to make sure that I am locking it 100% in there. So what's gonna happen now is that we want to start gathering stuff and this could be a lot more twisted but basically you're gonna have a chain line that you have going through. So we're just gonna take the yarn, okay, and we're just gonna slip in some stitches, okay, so just some strands in here and we're gonna do what, like a clothesline at the end, okay. So we just, we don't start pulling on it, we just kind of get it all loose and at the end, when we get all the way down to the other side, we're gonna pull tightly and it's gonna make it go into a ball. Okay, so we're just feeding it through. Sometimes it catches on some of this stuff, so just make sure you're paying attention to that. Okay, so I only have a few more strands to go. See how easy this project is, so I'm kind of right to the end. Okay, and so what I wanna do before I pull this tight is that I'm gonna pretend that I have um, a scrunchie. So let me get that right now. So let's pretend that this loop is a scrunchie. I don't have any scrunchies here in the studio. And I'm just going to insert it before I pull everything. I'm gonna insert it through. So you're inserting it through your elastic scrunchie at this time. And then what we want to do is pull everything tight 
and it's gonna wrap everything into a nice tight ball. And don't be too delicate with it, just reef on it. <laughs> okay, so we wanna pay attention to where this is hanging out and we wanna make sure that we get nice and tight. Okay, so what I want you to just do is go in the strands in behind and just grab a few. Okay, so I'm going, making sure that I'm going around the scrunchie again. Okay, making sure that it's not tangling into anything. And then once I get it nice and tight like this, I can just weave it in a few of the extra strands just to tie it firmly into position. Again, just paying attention to where that scrunchie is. And this time I wanna kinda come in, in between, okay, to create a loop so that we can tie it into position. And I wanna do that one more time so that it's a complete knot. Just slip into some strands that are in the other side. Again, grab the loop up so it makes a tie, just like that. Now with your scissors, all you're just gonna do is just cut that off. Just cut off the working string like this. And now you're just going to, now because I used a scrunchie that is kind of obvious here, you wanna uh, just get a scrunchie that make, makes the color make sense. So you can see that I have a piece hanging out just like so. So what you have to pay attention to is that where are these strands right here. So if I cut back here, this is gonna cause it all to loosen up. So what I'm gonna do is that when I cut it, I wanna make sure that I don't go into this loop because it's obviously using it. So I wanna just make sure I stay close to the outside like this. You can also use a piece of thread if you wanted to and just kinda tuck it into position as you go. And so basically you are just going to fluff and again this um, scrunchie because I have the loose ends hang hanging out like so you will not have those things happening on yours. So we're just gonna cut those out as well so that it prevents it from showing it when I fluff it up. <laughs> so now I have the scrunchie on the other side. I've got it nice and trimmed and basically it's good to wear and that's how you would create a scrunchie using Red Heart Boutique Fleecy. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of redheart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. Until next time, we'll see ya.